Shalom, shalom to all of you who woke up early this morning. You're listening to Kanguka and I'm Chris Ndikumana, the host of this broadcast. Today is Monday and I greet all the people who take time to pray for Kanguka team. On behalf of the whole team, I thank you for your prayer support. As I often say, if you blessed by this ministry, if it helps you, you should pray for it. It's for your own good because if you pray for this ministry, I am we manifest himself and Satan's plans will be defeated. When you pray, the things I am has planned to do through this ministry will come into existence. Let me show you how you should pray for me because many people ask me how they can specifically pray for me. Pray that I will be able to say exactly what I am wants me to say, that I will have a revelation of what he wants me to teach. There are many Bible subjects one can teach on, but I want to specifically teach on what I am wants me to tell you because he knows your heart better than I do. He knows your needs more than I do. My desire is to be used by the Spirit of God. Whenever you pray for Kanuka team, don't forget to also pray for all the people who support this ministry. There are people who make great efforts in supporting us and they enable us to do all the things we do. This work requires a lot of resources, so I want every listener to take time to pray for the partners of Kanuka. I will say it again, we need your prayers because they strengthen us. May all the glory be to I am. As a Reminder, I am is the name of God as recorded in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. For those that are new in Kanguka, you may have received this teaching through audio on WhatsApp, but you can download the Kanguka app through App Store or Play Store. You just have to write the word Kanguka in Play Store or App Store. Kanguka is K-A-N-G-U-K-A. Once downloaded, you will select English as your default language. As usual on Mondays, I would like to remind you about the guiding principle or the motto of Kanguka. These three guiding principles have already changed the lives of many people. The first principle is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day and the third is forbidden to complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. Today, I'm going to talk about the first principle which is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. Many people find it difficult to apply this principle in their lives. Many have told me that it's very hard to accept the will of God especially when it's different from their own will. If you were to ask anyone if they are willing to accept the will of God The answer is always yes. It's easy to say that you desire what God wants. If you are a believer, you usually want to do what he wants you to do. As I said, it's easy to say that you accept God's will, but pulling it into practice in your life is very difficult, especially if God's will is different from yours. There are things you want to do, but you realize that you are required to do things that are completely different. Another big challenge to applying the will of God in your life is when you don't understand what you require to do or even think that it doesn't make any sense. Humans always want to understand what they are doing, but when it comes to God's will, all we need to know is that I am said it. It's good if you can understand it, but whether you understand it or not, you require to do what I am said. When I was a new believer, it was hard for me to apply in my life a godly requirement that I didn't understand. I wanted to understand everything first, but I came to the realization that we can't fully understand everything. The question we should ask and care about is, did I am say that? This is the main question. You may have a hard time understanding something you heard in the word of God, but since you know that it's the word of God, my advice to you is to pray so you will know how to apply it in your life as per I am's desire. I want to show you an example of how it's good to obey the word of God even when you don't have a full understanding. I want you to read the whole story on your own after the broadcast. It's in 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 1 to 14. It's a very encouraging story that teaches us that if we obey I am, he's going to manifest himself in our lives. Many of you might already be familiar with this story. It's a story of Naaman. He was a commander-in-chief of the Syrian army and a mighty man, but he had a big problem. He was a leper. In those days, it was shameful to be a leper. Lepers had to hide themselves. They couldn't go in public. It was a big disgrace. But God showed grace to Naaman through a young Hebrew slave that lived in his home. 
She told her master about the prophet of God and her God's healing power. Naaman had no other alternative, so he decided to go and see the prophet Elisha. I want you to read carefully what happened. When Naaman arrived at the house of the prophet, Elisha sent a messenger to tell him to go wash in the river Jordan seven times. Naaman was furious about those instructions because they didn't make any sense to him. He thought it would be a dumb thing to do, so he refused to do it. It's only after one of his servants insisted, telling him that he was asked a simple thing, it's only then that he humbled himself and accepted to follow the instructions of the prophet. We see in verse 14 that he humbled himself and did what Elisha told him to do and he was healed immediately of his leprosy. His skin became like the skin of a little child. If he hadn't obeyed, he would have died from leprosy. I strongly urge you to always be obedient to God even when you don't understand. The only questions you should be asking yourself are, what does I am say about my life? What does he say in his word? Whether we understand or not, let's obey God in everything. It's only then that we see his mighty hand in action in our lives. We are now in the teaching part of the broadcast and we are continuing to learn about sanctification. I want you to know that in the Bible, going up to the mountain of God is a representation of praying. And the goal isn't just to go up to the mountain of God, but it's to go all the way and reach the top of the mountain. When God called Moses to the Mount Sinai, he called him to go alone to the top of the mountain. That's where he received the Ten Commandments for the children of Israel. It's at the mountain of God that I am visited him in a very special way. God told Abraham to take his son Isaac to the mountain to offer him as a sacrifice. Elijah went to the Mount Carmel. Jesus woke up early and got to the Mount of Olives to pray. Genesis 22 verse 14 says, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. That's right. Everything you need will be given to you on the mountain of the Lord. It's for this reason that when I started this teaching, I showed you Psalm 24 verse 3 to 4, where it says that the one who will ascend into the hill of the Lord or stand in his holy place has to have clean hands and a pure heart. This is why I decided to teach on sanctification. We also read in Hebrews 12 verse 14 where it instructs us to pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So I wanted to show you today that God cared about sanctification even in the Old Testament. So far we mostly covered what Jesus said about sanctification but we can also see that even in the Old Testament sanctification was in God's mind. I'd like to remind the listeners of Kanguka that the things we read in the Old Testament were a shadow of the things to come. We need to understand this as we learn about the Word of God. We have covered a few books in the Old Testament and we continue to study more. As we go along reading and studying all the books of the Bible, we see that what's covered in the Old Testament is connected to today's life. You may wonder how do I know that? Well, in Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 to 17 it says, so let no one judge you in food or in drinks or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath. Verse 17 goes on to say, which are the shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. You can tell when it's a shadow of a person by seeing the head and the arms, but you wouldn't be able to tell who it is if you don't see the person with your own eyes. The Old Testament talked about the things to come, but today we are living in the truth. So you need to read what in the Old Testament in order to understand what God is saying to us today. Let me show you something from the law Moses gave the children of Israel. You know there is a lot of commandments, 613 to be precise, and they were very hard to follow. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 28 verse 42 to 43. We see that God is giving instructions to the priest. In the Old Testament, God gave detailed instructions on how he wanted everything to be. The priest couldn't just eat or wear or do what they wanted. Every Everything they did had to be according to the law. The word of God was very specific. Look at verse 42. It talks about how the priests should have linen underwear to cover their nakedness. You might wonder why God cared about giving instructions.
instructions on underwear. I will explain it tomorrow. We will see what it means in the New Testament and what it has to do with sanctification. May I am bless you. Have a blessed day.